Hey man, it's Friday, it's payday, and today I'm gonna tell you how to get paid. This is for you up and coming rappers and you people who wanna get in music business and just don't know how to start or don't know where to begin. Today I'm gonna tell you how to do it, man. The first thing I would tell you to do is get an attorney, an entertainment lawyer. An entertainment lawyer is a good person to have on your side because not only can they read over contracts for you and answer questions for you, but a good entertainment lawyer has relationships with record labels and music execs because a good entertainment lawyer has been negotiating deals for years with other record labels and other artists. A lot of people say that you gotta go mingle with DJs at the clubs and you gotta show up to every event and you know make yourself seen and that's all cool you can do that too but a good entertainment lawyer already has all those relationships now a good entertainment lawyer is gonna cost you about at least five thousand dollar retainer fee and that'd be a, a good way to invest your money now if you don't have five thousand dollars and coming into the music business with no money that's what i did I didn't have no money. I didn't have no $5,000 to come into the game and I got paid. And I'm gonna tell you how I did it with no money. Came into the game and got paid. When I first got my first record deal with Latium Records, got a contract. I didn't have no lawyer look over the contract. And even if I did have a lawyer look over the contract, I probably wouldn't have listened to him because I was so eager and so hungry and wanted to be a rapper so bad that I didn't care what the contract said. So I signed the contract. I think they gave me like $500 and bought me some clothes and some shoes. They did pay for some studio time and you know, pay for my album production and that's what I really needed. After I signed the deal with Latium Records, they sent me to Dope House Records and got me in the studio at Dope House. And when I was there at Dope House, that's how I started meeting everybody at Dope House, SPM and everybody over there at Dope House, that's how I met them because Latium sent me there to record. Latium Records, they was more uh, business oriented. They didn't really have no studio and producers and engineers on hand and Dope House did. So they sent me over there and they already had a relationship with Dope House. So when I got there and after some weeks of me being at Dope House, they kind of sensed that I wasn't too happy at Latium because I still had no money. And I was, you know, I was broke, was trying to record and you know, my clothes wasn't looking right. You know what I'm saying? So they kind of sensed that I wasn't too happy. So what they Dope House did is they offered to buy my contract from Latium, basically pay Latium to let me out of my contract and then pay me to sign with Dope House. So now I'm even more happy to sign this contract. So of course I ain't getting no entertainment lawyer or no music lawyer to look at this contract because I'm even more happy to sign this contract because now they're offering me a check. Carlos brother Tootie takes me to the Bank of America on Washington and he gets the contract notarized right there when I sign the contract. As soon as I sign the contract, he hands me the check. I'm not realizing that when, when I'm signing these contracts though, what it's saying in there is that I'm not owning my masters. You know what I'm saying? And the most important thing in a music business when you're trying to come up and get paid is owning your masters. Ownership. You gotta own your masters. I didn't know nothing about that back then though. Like I said, I was just young. I was 17, 18 years old. I was just happy to get into the music business. They gave me an advance, but once that advance was spent and the album starts selling, they're collecting the royalties off that album, not me. I never saw any money on the back end. That's where I learned from those first two albums, Lucky Me and You Already Know, I learned if I really want to make some money, I need to own these albums so I could collect the royalties. So that's why everything after that, I made sure I owned them. I owned my masters after that. That's why people ask, how come the Fourth Wish album never came out? It kind of did in a way, y'all just didn't know. The songs that are on the Pimps Up, Holes Down album, Swimming Pool and Me Don't Care and all that old shit, that, that was the Fourth Wish album. But at that time, Dope House was signing a, they signed a deal with Warner. And Warner gave Dope House some money. And then they were gonna put my album out, the Fourth Wish, they gave me some money. So with that money they gave me, I went and pressed up my own CDs and instead of turning in the fourth wish, I took those songs and put it on the Pimps Up Holds Down album and pressed that up and sold it to the store. You know what I'm saying? And Dope House didn't care because they already got their money from Warner. So Dope House made a win, I made a win, and we called it a day. Legally, I was still signed under contract to Dope House, but Carlos called me and he told me that he was just willing to squash it and let me go and do my own thing just as long as I continue to rep Dope House and would come through whenever they need me on any albums to feature, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, cool, you know what I'm saying? And I appreciate him for that. 
because he didn't have to do that. He didn't have to let me go and he didn't have to, he could have tied me down if he really wanted to. But you know what I'm saying? He was playing about it. Ever since then, every album, every mixtape, everything I put out, I was collecting the royalties off of that. And back then we didn't have digital distribution. We didn't have Spotify and iTunes and Apple Music. So now it's even easier to do it. But back then, we had to go drive in the car with a trunk full of CDs and go find these record stores, you know what I'm saying? And Texas is big, so I would just drive all over Texas and hit up every record store with a trunk full of tapes, you know what I'm saying? And that's how I made my money. But now it's easier, because now you can just go through TuneCore, but TuneCore ain't gonna help you with no promotion. You're on your own. TuneCore's better if you're an established artist, you know what I'm saying? If you're an established artist already, then I would, yeah, recommend TuneCore, because you already have a following, you already got a fan base. So you just upload your music on TuneCore and it's everywhere on everybody's phone it's available to download. But if you don't have a following and you don't have a fan base, it's kind of hard to just throw your music up on TuneCore and, and get paid because nobody really knows who you are. So that, in that sense, I would recommend either it's going, you either got to have some money to pay for some features, get with somebody like a GT Digital Distribution where they do a little bit of promotion and marketing and they got relationships with other artists so they can kind of put you in the dough with other people, you know what I'm saying? I put music up through TuneCore and GT Dig Digital Distribution and Soul South. Those are three digital distribution companies you could use to get paid. Make sure you own your masters because if you don't own your masters and you sign a record deal with somebody, that person that you signed the deal with, that's who's gonna collect your royalties. And then you're gonna have to be calling them wondering where your check is. And if for any, some reason y'all fall out over the years or you lose contact with them, they're still gonna be collecting your royalties after years to come, you know what I'm saying? For life, it's, it's once it's up on iTunes, it's up there forever. Like when people be hitting me up on my DM talking about can I sign them or can I put them on and sign to my label? I'm like, they don't know what they are saying. You know, they don't, they don't really know what they're asking for because then I'd be collecting your money forever. You know what I'm saying? And that's not what you want. The, the key is to get paid in the music business. You gotta own your own shit. You gotta own your own YouTube channel. You know what I'm saying? Stop putting up your music videos on other people's channels. You know what I'm saying? I used to do that too. That's why you see a lot of my music videos early music videos on other people's channels because I didn't realize that you get paid off YouTube you know what I'm saying publishing is another thing too that you got to own you go to BMI or ASCAP and sign up with them it's free it don't cost no money and they collect your money for every time your song you played on the radio or on television or on the internet you know what I'm saying sound exchange that's another company that collects money from Pandora and internet radio stations all these different ways are different vehicles to get paid from in the music business. But if you don't own your masters, you ain't gonna be able to collect none of that. Whoever you're signed to on the record deal is gonna collect that money. So you wanna make sure you own your masters and you know the business. If you didn't know none of this, and a good entertainment lawyer would know all of this. So that's why I said the easiest, best thing, best advice would be get an entertainment lawyer because they could lace you up and tell you everything you don't know. But that's how I did it, man. I did it, I did it the hard way with no entertainment lawyer. It took me 18 years to figure everything out, you know what I'm saying? And to be able to live strictly off rap, you know what I'm saying? And you can ask anybody, I live off rap. I don't this, I don't sell dope. I don't have no side hustle, that's it. I, I live off rap, I feed my whole family off rap. Vlog, we have actually merch coming through. Surprise, surprise. Merch, merch. Can't give y'all too much details, but we can say it should be coming in pretty soon. I know y'all gonna like one of them, cause I like one of them and just, it's a little bit about me, I'm just gonna say that. And I like them wear it all the time to school. He said, I said I'm always going to choose pepperoni over oh, salt grass. Drunk off milk. He's getting so big. I'm telling y'all, he gets he's so uptight in public. Is it good? Go ahead. Mmm, that smells good. I think I want some. some gumbo. Gumbo. 
Go ahead, you do it. No. Come on, babe, do it. Look at that. Do it. Type in the comments, tell us what that look like. <laughs> Great. If you've never tried these, you're missing out. What are these called on the menu, babe? Oysters papado. Oyster papado. They're baked oysters with spinach and cheese and what else? And crab meat, right? Hollandaise sauce. This is delicious. So, baby pork. <laughs> You gotta show them how to eat it. They're gonna have to find out. <laughs> All right. I'm about to dig in. Look at you guys. We killed them. <laughs> Yeah, like all everybody that follows him, or he'll pop up on the like news feed. So we got our food, y'all. It's a lot of food. You got a lot of shrimp, right? They they can sell. They only gave me three shrimps. He wanted to go to Captain Benny's. This beats Captain Benny's any day. All right, so food was delicious. Food was delicious. Say something for the vlog. Say something for the vlog. We're just leaving Papa Dose right now. Hold Who's on. that? Tom Cat? Speaker from. Go ahead. Hey, what's up, vloggers? It's your boy Tom Cat. Take a shrimp representative, man. I'm in this bitch. Not Papa Dose. I'm eating steak shrimp steak. You know what I'm talking about? Ever happen when you get, when you get a guard on your tank? You know what I'm saying? I'm in this bitch. You know what I'm talking about? So last night I had a dream. And I just remembered when we were in there at Papa Dose eating this shrimp right now. I had a dream. That about some shrimps last night in my dream and my dream is we had a whole bunch of dogs and then we were gone out of town for like two days and we forgot to feed them and the dogs were dying at home and then we came home I had a box of fried shrimp left over and I gave them to the dogs and they started eating them and when we were sitting there eating the shrimp I looked at her plate and she had fried shrimp and it remind, reminded me of my dream she goes and googles it to see what it means and then she comes back with who you been flirting with. Don't play with me, Lucky. I said, what? She said, who you been flirting with? She was dead serious. Who you been flirting with? We're going to Goodwill right now to donate some clothes. Get rid of them. Did I pass it? No. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to, on our way to donate some clothes at Goodwill. I have like Jordans and shoes that I'm just going to give away because I don't wear them. I got a bunch of designer shoes I'm gonna give away because it represents a misuse of my abundance. It symbolizes a time where I was throwing money away. Okay, so we just pulled up to the neighborhood Goodwill. Got some bags. Here we go. How you doing? Hi. Uh, tax form for yourself? Please. What's your uh, zip? 77389. So I always wonder why people be like, yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. And I was like, man, why are they so happy and you know what I'm saying? So ecstatic about saying, what's up? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. But I just went and checked my ad rates and my ad revenue and estimated revenue for the month. And now I realize why they so happy. Appreciate y'all. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Let's get it on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. And if you don't understand what I'm doing on YouTube every day, you know what I'm saying? Vlogging my life. If you don't if you don't get it, you ain't got no fans. And you have a regular life and you have a regular job. But me, I got fans. And fans is how I pay my bills. And nowadays, you gotta engage with your fans or you're gonna get left in the dust. And I don't do the Facebook and be on IG Live all day answering questions or on Snapchat or other social media outlets. So I chose to go the YouTube route because YouTube pays the best. You feel me? Now I got my kids and trying to live right, put some positive imagery out there, show the world how to be a man, how to be a family man, show my fans it's okay to be a family man and not be running the streets all the time, making it rain in the club. And people still got some shit to say. You can't please everybody and I know that man. I appreciate all the love. It's always gonna be some haters and I'm cool with that. You know what I'm talking about? Anyway. 
I had some people asking me if I still smoke and if I still sip. Is y'all trying to get the child protective services called on me, man? See me over here making a family friendly vlog, you know what I'm talking about, man? No, I'm sober as October. I ain't finna put them people in my life, man. I don't promote drugs. Shout out to everybody if you in a in a state where cannabis is legal and you 18 years old, then go on do your thing. But uh I don't promote no illegal activities over here, man. I'm a law-abiding citizen. Y'all can't be playing like that with these people, man. My boy got pulled over. He had like half a blunt in the ashtray. It wasn't lit. He got pulled over, him and his girl, and their little baby was in the back seat in the car seat. You know they took him and his girl to jail and took their baby from him, and their baby is in foster care now because they had a half a blunt in the ashtray. Can't be playing like that when you got kids, man. You know, you gotta be on your grown man shit. You gotta be on your grown man business. It's cool when you young and you teenager and you, you know what I'm saying? Or you young and don't got no kids or if you grown and don't got no kids, you know what I'm saying? You do you. But when you got people, you got, when you got little ones, man, you gotta leave that shit alone, man. I don't even drink. I don't drink no, I, I told you, I. I quit drinking alcohol for my New Year's resolution. It's already, what, February 1st, and I still ain't drank no beer. I had a glass of champagne with Kelly on her birthday, but, you know, I ain't drank no beer. I can't, I'm cool if I have like one or two drinks, but man, I don't trust my actions once I get drunk. So, that's why I just rather not drink, period. Cause, you know, I got too many people depending on me and too much shit to lose. For, getting drunk and doing some dumb shit. You know what I'm saying? I could mess around and lose my whole family over one wrong mistake because I'm drunk. Uh, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do drugs. I don't want to kick it. I don't need no new friends. Straight like that, it is what it is. Back at the crib, I'm gonna take Houston his milk and I'm gonna catch up with y'all. Toxic, toxic. I'm cooking on the pan. I'm cooking on the pan. I'm cooking. No, no, no. Do something I'll be back with y'all when I get my food. So, back. Bad boy just stopped crying because he just wants attention. Oh, you crying, my too. Make sure y'all wash your plate. Yes, sir. I mean, yes, ma'am. I'm serious. Okay, well, I need to get my food. Woo! How much wood can a woodchuck chuck, woodchuck, a chuck wood? I usually just eat up all the food. So, as you can see, they talk. Bad boy. No. Gigi, what you gotta say? This was good. It was good. That's what I like to hear. It was good. You ever seen somebody brush some gold teeth? She would be asking me if my teeth is permanent. They don't get no more permanent than this. Damn, I got toothpaste in my eye. Oh look. Like you said, this is breakfast. This is my breakfast today. Freshly squeezed orange juice, a nectarine, and a plum. I ain't on no diet, I'm just trying to eat healthy this morning. I told you I'm trying to preserve my body. I'm an old man with a young woman. <laughs> You're stupid. Hey, 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 I wasn't done. I know this video's called, uh, you need a lawyer or get a lawyer. You wanna know why? Cause they're the highest ad rate. Stop telling me <laughs> that. 
he'd be giving up the game. 